Hello, my name is Tommy, and I travel to all the schools in Marin County to teach walking and biking safety. Because I can't see you in your classroom this year, I get to travel to you through the internet. First, I want to ask you, why do I go around encouraging students to walk or bike to school? There are lots of reasons. One reason is that when more students walk or bike to school, there's less pollution in the air and less traffic on the road. Another great reason is it's good exercise, and exercise is good for your muscles and your heart. Exercise also wakes up your brain, so you're more alert to learn in the morning. And lastly, we think it's fun. Do you think it's fun? Right now, we're going to talk about safe walking, whether you're walking in your community or walking to school. Pedestrian is just a fancy word for a person who is walking. A pedestrian is someone using their feet to get around. So when you are a pedestrian, what should you do before you cross the street? Well, first you want to stop at the curb. Not out in the street, but instead safely away from the road and cars. Next, it's time to look in all directions for vehicles. Look to the left, to the right, and look to the left again. You must always look for traffic before crossing. The last step is to listen, because you might be able to hear a car that you can't see. And it's always important to keep looking as you cross the street. Great job! Streets are shared by people walking, biking, and driving. Here's a street scene with cars, pedestrians, and bike riders. They all have to share the roadways, sidewalks, and crosswalks. Let's talk about sidewalks. When walking on sidewalks, Watch for cars coming out of driveways. The drivers may not be looking for pedestrians. Are there always sidewalks? No. People are still allowed to walk on a street without sidewalks, but they need to walk at the edge of the street. How about crosswalks? If there's a crosswalk nearby, you should use it. Car drivers expect people to be walking in crosswalks. but they don't always pay attention and look for people there, so you always need to be extra careful, even if you're in a crosswalk. But is there always a painted crosswalk? Well, no. Sometimes, on a really small street, you're allowed to cross at an intersection without a painted crosswalk. However, if you're anywhere near a crosswalk, you should use it. Walkers should make eye contact with car drivers to confirm that the driver has seen them and will stop and stay stopped. Signs that say yield to pedestrians mean that car drivers should only go after the pedestrian has crossed the street. All right, now that we've covered the basics of pedestrian safety, let's talk a little bit about bicycle safety. We'll start at the top to talk about how helmets should fit. All students and everyone under the age of 18 needs to wear a helmet when they're biking, scootering, skating, or doing other activities on wheels. Everyone over the age of 18 should wear a helmet because it's very important for keeping your brain safe. Let's do the two finger helmet check together. There should only be room for two fingers between the top of your eyebrows and the bottom of your helmet. You should also only be able to fit two fingers underneath your chin strap, so it shouldn't be too tight, but it shouldn't be super loose either. And then you can make a peace sign with your fingers and put it between the straps around your ear. The buckle should be right up against your ear and the straps should go around your ear. And then you can shake your head back and forth and up and down 
and make sure that your helmet is fitting snugly on top of your head. Check out these pictures of different fitting helmets. Some of them are pretty funny. But why is the middle top one wrong? That's because it's too far back on his head and not protecting his forehead. After this presentation, try getting your helmet and do the two-finger check. You can ask your parent or sibling to help you adjust the straps. Now let's learn how to check your bike for safety. Every time before you ride, you should do a quick check of your bike. It's called the ABC check. A is for air. Check both tires for air. Give them a squeeze. If your tires are squishy, do not ride your bike. Squishy tires can cause flat tires or even lead to a crash. Remember, just like a basketball, your tires will slowly lose air over time. You'll need to pump air into your tires every few weeks. B is for brakes. The brake lever should stop before hitting the hand grip. If the lever touches the hand grip, that means you don't have enough braking power. You should tell an adult and have them help fix it. While squeezing the brakes, rock your bike back and forth to check that both wheels are completely stopped. C is for chain. If your chain looks rusty or squeaks while you're riding, then it is too dry and you should have someone help add some oil. Lastly, make sure that your bike fits you properly. We'll learn more about proper bike fit in a video later on in this presentation. All right, now it's time to ride. But to ride a bike safely, we also need to know the rules of the road. Cyclists follow the same rules as drivers. There are some differences, like bikes can't ride on freeways, but most rules are the same. Let's quickly go over some of the main rules. Cyclists must stop at stop signs and red lights, signal where they want to go, and ride on the right side of the road. So go with the flow of traffic and not against it. Lastly, let's watch this short video about bicycle and traffic safety. Riding your bike is a lot of fun. Yeah! Wait, whoa! Whoa! I don't think it's all that fun. It can be. It can be a lot of fun. That's what I said. Me too. And you're right. But it's important to ride safely. And there are things you can do to help keep yourself safe. Like what? Well, you start by making sure you have the right bicycle. What's wrong with this one? It's too big for you. That's why you're having trouble riding it. When you sit on the bike like that, you should be able to touch the ground with both feet. If you can't... I almost can. Almost doesn't count. If you can't touch the ground, you need a smaller bike. Okay, that is better. What else? Well, what you wear is important. You mean we have to wear special bike clothes? No, but you want something bright. It makes it easier for the drivers to see you, and being seen is a big part of being safe. It's also why reflectors like these are important. And they look cool. But probably the most important thing you should wear is a helmet. Why? Because it protects your head if you crash. But I won't crash. I'm a good rider. Even a good rider might crash. What if a dog ran out in front of you all of a sudden? Oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. Wear it this way. Not this way. Or this way. Or this way. This way. It should fit snug on your head and sit low on your forehead like this, so you can see the edge of the helmet when you look up. And it should always be buckled. Okay. Can I get on the bike now? If you remember to do one more thing. What? If there's something wrong with your bike, like maybe the tires don't have enough air or the brakes don't work very well, be sure to tell an adult. And tell them before you ride it, okay? Okay. Good. Now let's talk about the rules for safe riding. Oh man, are there a lot? No, just a few, but they're important. The first one is ride with an adult, like your parent, for example, or with an older brother or sister. I 
could do that with my sister. She's in high school. She helps me decide where we should ride. And where's that? We like to ride in the park, where there aren't many cars. We ride on roads where there's not much traffic. Good. Those are both good ideas. And do you ride on the right side of the road or the left? On the right, in the same direction the cars are going. Yes. And here's an easy way to remember that. Ride right. Ride right. OK, what else? Road signs and traffic signals. You have to do what they say. So if you see a stop sign or a red signal, you have to stop. Yes. And a green signal? Means you can go. It does. But you still need to use your eyes and your ears. Look and listen to what's around you. Just because you see other people doesn't mean they see you, even if you have on a bright shirt. Sometimes people get distracted and forget to look for each other. And don't be weaving back and forth like that, because then the drivers won't know what you're doing. And we might get hit? Yes. If you're riding on a trail or a sidewalk, you need to watch out for the people walking there and move out of their way. And if you need to pass someone, let them know before you do it. All right. Now, this might be the most important one of all. When you're crossing a street or a path or a driveway or an alley or any place a car could pull out, you should stop and look left, then right, then left again. Make sure there isn't a car coming before you go on. So any place a car could be coming? Any place. We stop and we look left, right, and left again. Yes, and if no cars are coming, then you can go. But what if there are lots of cars coming? If there's a lot of traffic or you're not comfortable riding across the street for any reason, you could both get off your bikes and walk them to the other side in a crosswalk. Sometimes my sister and I do that. Can we ride our bikes now? Almost. First, tell me one important thing you just learned. Always ride with an adult or an older brother or sister. Yes. And what else? Wear your helmet. Excellent. One more. When you come to an intersection or a driveway or anything like that, you should stop and look left, right, and left again to make sure no cars are coming. Yes, very good. Are we done? We're done. Have a good ride. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation today. Let's review what we learned. Walking, biking, scootering, and skating gets you exercise, which is good for your body, creates no pollution, so good for the environment, reduces traffic, and can be a lot of fun. Make sure to always walk and ride with care and follow the rules of the road. Check your bike and helmet before you ride. Don't ride if your equipment has a problem. And I look forward to seeing you at your school next time. We'll bring bikes and equipment, and we'll have a bike rodeo out on the blacktop. See you then.